Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Journey Become a Head Coach. As always, I'm your host, Jeff Freeman. Thank you for the love and support. Like I said before, I was going to go over the uh, Swinging Gate Pod Part 2. Um, if you saw Part 1, you'll see this is our base formation. We come out, we call it Marines. Um, I'm a big supporter of the military, police, all that stuff. So we kind of decided, well, I decided I wanted to create something um, where I kind of name, you know, our field goal units, the Marines. Our punt team is the Army. Our kickoff team is Air Force. And our punt return would be the Navy and stuff like that. So I, I kind of name everything after some kind of military group. Again, that's just the way I am. And it makes it easy for our kids to remember and understand what group they're in and which one. So, and again, it kind of gives them that sense of pride of special teams. They're part of a special forces group. Um, and things like that. So it makes it really fun and for them and everything else. So this is our base front when we come out in our Marine style look for our field goal and our swinging gate pod system. Again, for those of you that saw our original look, you'll know that our four first fakes are out of this look and there's really nothing else that we do to it. Then afterwards I started adding to it. So as of right now, I think I got close to nine fakes out of this. Um, the first one obviously was alpha, and I'm not gonna redraw them because again, you can go back and watch the video, but I just wanna review you. This is kinda how we build off of them. So alpha was the one where our center is a direct snap, and these three just form a wedge and they run right down in there. Run that one, got a score on it. Um, beta, which we're probably gonna change to bravo, um, just cause it's gonna fit with the calls better. Um, bravo is essentially direct snap here. Our quarterback or kicker, technically, this is our QB. This would be our kicker. On Bravo, the kicker runs up and the quarterback runs like we're gonna try and run some kind of like actual just ISO play out of this. But the kicker whiffs on purpose and the quarterback does a jump pass um, trying to get all these guys to suck up. And this is the base defense I've seen where this is how people kind of tend to line up to it. So again, I'll kind of show you how these fakes work. And against this front, we got this one out of there really nice and real easy, but in any case, so Bravo, or at that point we were calling it Beta. Charlie, we throw to our F, it's just a quick snap, kicker runs up, blocks, quarterback throws to the F, F runs in. And then Foxtrot is just a simple option route for the X, depending on what he's got. If this backer is more inside, we can run the quick slant. If the corner is inside, we can run the fade. If he's outside, again, some kind of post or drag or anything like that. Or if he's playing way off for whatever reason, just a quick hitch and go. So those were the basic ones that we ran. Um, so it was alpha, beta, which we're gonna switch to Bravo, alpha here, beta here, Charlie, Foxtrot. So I would call Marines after a score, and then I would sit, and our, kit, our QB would be looking at me on the sideline, right there about the 20, and I would just yell it out at that time, whether it was you know alpha, beta, Charlie, Foxtrot, whichever one, I would just yell it based on what I saw out of here. So I'd always look, I'd basically just go left to right and I would just look and see which one was the best out of this. Now, to be quite honest, we never used this one because the corners usually were up in some kind of press man and there usually was a secondary guy right here, whether it was a backer or safety, kind of depended. But in any case, I was always afraid of any kind of trying to run any slant or fade because it basically was a two on one scenario. So we never got that far. We tend to run everything out here. Now we did run something to him later and, and I'll get to that. Uh, Delta, which was our next one. This one was a big one for us because it was predicated off of our fly, off of our fly, fly sweep. So we ran this guy in motion. So we'd motion him across. He'd get to about right there. We'd do snap. And instead of a full fly sweep handoff, it was just a catch and toss. So he'd catch it, toss it to him. First thread inside, first thread inside. First threat, first threat, first threat, and then you just find a hole and turn up and go. X, we just release inside, try to block off the corner. Same thing here, just try to block and hold off anything trying to chase them. So, Delta, we scored on that one. The, uh, that was actually the one we scored on against the former state champs when we had like what I consider our best drive ever, where it was two run plays, we score, and we go up 8-0 on them. It was fantastic. but. Again, it was a great play, and it was just predicated off of they'd already seen us in this look the previous week, and they saw us do that toss, 
and they know we like to run fly sweep. So it worked out really well where it's like, okay, fly sweep, boom, here we go, get it inside. And we spread them out enough to where we had the angles and the leverage, and he would just pick the hole and dive in and go get the, the two points. So that was Delta. The next one was Echo. Um, Echo, another one we put a guy in motion, but this time we're putting the F in motion. And we're kind of turning it into a, uh, a smoke screen, basically. So, again, another fun one for us. Um, this one we also scored on, another fun one. It worked out really well. So now we put the F in motion out, and as soon as he gets halfway, he snaps it, he goes directly out, kicks out the corner, first outside threat, first outside threat, quick step, come back, throw, get up and score. Kicker just goes to block first threat, nose goes to block first threat. So again, based on our angles, based on our leverage, we end up with a one-on-one -on -one block. We have more guys than they can handle because they have to commit four over here to match our four. So we are able to get the angles on them, and this worked out really well again for us. That was a way to me to get it to the X without having to worry about any kind of fade or interception or any kind of drop pass. So it worked out really nice. So again, that, that one was, uh, was Echo. And of course, yes, I'm sharing these and whatnot. I don't have to come up with signs. or probably change them up because someone might see this. But again, you still got to stop it. And then not only that, in the back of my mind, I got stuff for this as well where we can still motion here and we can still toss it back over there. So again, we can play games just as much as anybody and we can make advancements. I don't care. You still got to stop it. That's kind of my, that's, that's my avenue. And I mean, I've, just like anybody, any other coach, everyone's probably gone through and watched everything known to man. But, you know, at the same time, you still got to stop it. So, yeah, you might see that motion, and then at some point in time, they're going to adjust to it. Well, then I'm going to come with something back off of it. So, that's just kind of the way it is. The person with the marker wins. So, um, next one was uh, Tango that we came up with. And I called it Tango because it goes to our tight end, our H here. So, <laughs> how this one, how this one works. And again, it's another fun one. Um, did not work though. We did run it. It did not work. So it was just one of those things. Um, like I said, it just didn't happen to work for us because we didn't get up in. We didn't turn up as fast as we should have when I saw it unfold. Um, when I watched it on film, when we went back, but it was there, and, and it was glorious. And it was a. It's a playoff of Delta. So we still motion him across like it's normal Delta. The only difference is these guys block down hard to the outside, H takes a hard step, and then comes back and sits right here. So everyone's seeing the fly sweep, everyone's seeing this happening, and then it's a quick toss to our end, it's basically like a screen, so while these guys are pursuing for the fly sweep, he just sits back. So he catches 1001, lets him go by to block, 1001, 1002, tosses it, and again, we had it, this backer did a good job of sitting, and if our H would have just followed right up the gut, instead he tried to cut back for some whatever reason, and we got tackled right at the line. So we ended up didn't get we ended up not getting that one. But again, the premise was there. The window dressing was there. Everyone saw the fly sweep. These guys all moved to go with the fly sweep. So we had a nice angle to block all these guys down. This tackle took off, and we should have been able to get up, but that backer did a nice job of sitting and our H for whatever reason misread it and instead of continuing to follow trying to cut right up inside this tackle inside these two tackles he decided to cut back for some weird reason and we ended up getting tackled for uh, for no score on that so and then this last one this one I just added towards the end of la uh, towards the end of my first year I added it it was a, a fake I saw the Miami Dolphins do and they originally do it where they make kind of that uh, that old school look where they have three and three. I took this and I said, well, no, I want to keep my original formation. I don't want to have to change anything. So what do I have to add or what do I have to do to really tweak with it? So I got to get this kicker. I got to get this guy over here. And then I got to motion him across because originally their original play 
looks like this. So that's that's kind of their original look to it. They have, um, sorry, they have more of this look. They have more of that look to it versus what we had. So, and um, sorry, I'm missing somebody here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, I know they have one guy on that side, but in any case, we're missing. I am missing one guy, but. He, the quarterback, made this move. He runs it down like they're going to run some kind of sweep. He fakes the block, and it ends up being a shovel pass. They ran this back in 2019. So I was like, okay, I really like that. It gives us another kind of avenue to work with that fly sweep. It makes it look like we're also kind of running like a QB sweep, something like that. So I'm like, okay, how can I get us in that position without compromising what we run and how we run it? So I was like, okay, well, let's, how do I get that look when I have that many guys? So I thought to myself, I was like, okay, how can I get these guys to move around and get them where I need to be to run something like that? So I was like, all right, well, you can always shift. So I said, okay, if I run, if we're going to call this Zulu, okay, because we're going to add some things to this. So if I'm going to call this Zulu, because we're going to go to the left, he's going to then call shift, Zulu shift. When he yells shift, our kicker is going to come right over here and sit. Wait one count. Bring him in motion. As soon as he gets here, he'll snap it. QB will take off in that sprint. This fly sweep guy is going to come and block first threat and help with the nose to block first threat. These guys will basically do one large kind of scoop block to really help. Kicker's going to fake like he's going to block the tackle, then turn around and sit. QB will shovel it right there. So that's, again, haven't used it yet. This is something I just finished designing towards the end of my first year, so in 2019, 2020. I finished redesigning it because I really liked that idea of having a QB sprint out. And the nice thing is if he turns and runs, which most times we have a right-handed quarterback, it basically turns into almost like an option shovel right there. So that's why I really liked it, and it's a really quick play. And all these guys are going to suck up when they see that QB take off to run a sprint, and that kicker is going to miss, miss his block and then sit there, and we're going to get a quick shovel. So will it work? I don't know. Again, on paper, just like everything when you draw it on the whiteboard, everything on paper looks like it's going to work. So again, work out really well. We'll see what happens, and uh, I'll basically give you guys a report on it, even when I use it in 2021, which, again, it'll have been a year since any of my uh, opponents have seen us run any of this. And the nice part about it is they still have to practice against the basic formation. And then, here's the last thing I'm going to share with you. At the same time, let's just say nothing looks good, but I still want to run a fake, because... That's what I do, and that's what I love to do. Maybe I will call trap. So when we come together, when we finally come together on all this, remember that's guard, tackle, tackle. That's guard, and then our H is right here, and then that ends up being our E, that ends up being our F, that ends up being our X, and then obviously we have our QB and our kicker, right? So now here's the fun thing. If I want to call this again, these are our two best receivers. So if I want to run trap, yeah, I'm going to bring everybody together. Everyone's going to condense down. They're all going to condense down to try and block the kick and all that good stuff. And you know, that's what they're going to do. For the most part, they're going to try and block the kick. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run trap out of this. So everyone's going to down block, down block, down block. And then these two guys are going to pull. My end is going to pull, wrap on that backside end. He's going to pull around. We're going to toss it to our X, so we'll snap to the QB. It'll be one of those catches and tosses. He's going to cut right up underneath. Kicker is going to run and block on the end. After the quarterback tosses it, he's just going to get in the way. So, again... Yeah, we can kick it, and then we'll call trap. 
So even though I have this crazy four pod formation, well now, yeah, we're gonna come together, but then I'm gonna go ahead and run trap. Even though this is a really long trap, I mean, this is more borderline like a counter, but at the same time, I like to call it trap because at the same time, we're not gonna block that in. We're gonna kick him out and wrap him, and then our, our uh, tailback will wrap onto that corner, or the safety if that safety really scrapes when they see everything coming around. But again, you're gonna see three guys coming this way. You don't really know who's gonna have the ball, and then my kicker or my QB can just block to help clean up any trash that tries to come on the outside. Because usually what we end up getting is that free safety or whoever or backer. We end up having guys out here, and they're never gonna make that block. They have to go all the way around. The guy that gets the closest is the guy that lines up out here. So that's the guy really our, a, our E is gonna get when he comes around. He's gonna end up getting him or our F basically it's going to pick up first threat is going to end up getting him but that's kind of the way i've kind of planned it and worked it out is we usually get guys outside the h the guy head up the h so we're going to have two guys to kick out those two and then our x basically picking the gap and getting underneath so it'll work out really nice for us again haven't used it yet this is something i pieced together because i was like i need to be able to run a fake out of our actual field goal formation other than fire so and again fire you know, we always go to the QB strength for us. So no matter what we look like, so if we're in this front, so if we're here and we got to call fire, again, our H is going to go to the back of the end zone and sit. Our E is going to go to the corner of the pylon. Our F is going to go midway. And then our H is just going to get, our X is going to get right inside the end zone line and he's just going to basically run a sprint out kicker is going to block backside so that's if we ever get in a fire situation so now if we have to flip that like let's just say again we're on so we run this when we're in the middle of the field if, and we tend to put the long side to the field side so let's just say we're on this hash we're actually just kicking a regular old field goal we're on this hash, so now we look more like this. So this is what we look like now, more than what we were looking like earlier, because we're on this side, fields over here. So depending on the field goal, it's still the same kind of look, except now obviously we're gonna go to the wide side. He's always gonna sprint out to the wide side. That just kind of tells these guys which way to go. He's going to still run that corner route, but on the opposite side, it's a post. So he's just going to run that way for the most part. And then now our E turns into a backside post, our F turns into a dig, and our X turns into a, a drag route. And then again, our kicker, instead of going this way, quarterback's going to sprint out, and our kicker is going to go and try and help block the end. but we're going to the field side if we're doing a regular kickoff. So same routes, just obviously if we're in the middle of the field, we're going to go you know, the opposite way on this, but we're always going to sprint out towards the QB's ability to sprint out. So if he's a right-handed quarterback, we're gonna sprint out to the right and all the routes are gonna to go to the right. It doesn't really matter what formation or front we are in, what the other or what the defense is in. So again, even if it's the opposite, so now we're on the opposite hash. Same thing's going to occur because what's going to happen is all these guys are going to try and block when they get that fire call. H is going to run. E's going to run to the post. F's going to run that dig. X is going to run that drag. Everything's still going to the QB side. And I'm sorry, I misspoke on that last one. The kicker's still gonna go out to try and help and block front side. Because again, if our QB's sprinting, that backside guy's not gonna get there as long as he's helping. Now, if there's no threat, obviously help backside, but we wanna help you help him get to the edge and get outside, because either A, he can throw it, or B, he can run it. So again, no matter which way we flip it, it's the same routes just going towards the QB's running arm. If he's a right-handed quarterback, 
all the routes go towards the right. Just to make it really easy, really simple. Everybody knows, okay, we're running, you know, we're running field goal, fire, fire, fire. It's the same look. Everyone's just got to run towards the QB's throwing arm. These guys are running either posts or corners. This guy's running a digger and out. This guy's always running a drag. It's just a matter of where, trying to get in the quarterback's line of sight. So that finishes up our pod part two out of our swinging gate pod system. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I know for those of you, for any of my uh, other coaches out there that I coach against, I'm sure now you're going to understand, oh man, he's got so many fakes, I don't even know really how to guard that. But I mean, at the same time, I don't mind. You guard it, I'll just come up with something new and maybe I get rid of one or two. So again, that's just the nice thing about that pod system. I have an infinite amount of things I can come up with. It's just a matter of those are the things we've worked on and those are the things I've installed. Now granted, last one, the last two, Zulu and Trap, have not put in yet. We'll see if I'm able to get those in this year. It'll be a fun thing to put in. And again, I enjoy special teams because the kids enjoy it. I'll tell you what, when we got to special teams, our kids were fired up because they were really interested in what kind of new fake I was going to come up with for the week. So, um, and that was the thing. It was a new fake every week. We installed them. We had the basic four before we got to the season. And we started working on them. We would work on it week zero through week four. And then I didn't bring it out until our first league game against Lyndhurst. Then I brought it out, showed it to him. Actually, sorry, excuse me. I showed the formation the week before. Uh, when we played Gridley. We came out in the formation. I never planned on faking it, and I didn't. I just planned on coming out so in that way Linners had to look at it and practice against it. And again, it was something easy we put in in five minutes that a team has to take time to show their team how to line up against it. And now, not only do you have to know how to line up against it, now you got to understand, okay, well, if this backer lines up too far, their coach is going to call this. And if they line up too far outside or inside, he's going to call this. So I've tried to set it up based on no matter how wide they are, we'll run up inside. If they line up too far inside, we'll run outside or throw outside. So I've tried to kind of set it up to where no matter what they do, they're wrong. Now, of course, the one setup we had that didn't work, it was a misread by our tight end. For some reason, he cut back to the outside instead of just following right up the gut. So, again, the best laid plans sometimes don't work because, again, you can't account for what your players are going to do. So... But again, thank you so very much. Again, if you like this, share it, you know, hit that little subscribe button, all that good stuff. Thank you again for all the support. Um, if you want to see more special team stuff, I'm going to work on some more punt. Um, I could show you the right and left punt that I have as far as it's a two kicker system where you have two punters. Um, maybe I'll go over that one next week. Um, have I been able to run it yet? No, but I really like it. I found it. Again, that's one I legitly just took from somebody else and I saw it. I was like, wow, this would be awesome to be able to run but you need a left-footed kicker and a right-footed kicker. So um, I'll share it. I'll share how I've kind of built in fakes to it because, um, again, it was just the punting system and just how they do their rugby punt. There wasn't any fakes. There wasn't anything else to it. So, um, again, I'll show – maybe I'll – in fact, I will share that with you all next week. I'll share the two-punter system that I would love to install at one point, but you do need a left-footed kicker and a right-footed kicker. Again, be great. Push limits. Hold the line. Thank you all so very much. Have a great week.